welcome to Digiana Studios, Whoa. Long Island City. <laughs> Here we have the first exhibition in this beautiful space. Whoa! Um, hi, I'm Tommy. I'm the artist who's made these uh, prints that are filling the space. Um, on this side, we have a lot of blue sky and outdoor pieces. And on this side, we have some pieces that are made uh, darker, right, from the interior theater spaces they were generated from. Um, so we have some uh, images that are generated uh, with uh, a program I write called the Automatic Digital Photo Collage, and they're time-lapse collages, time-lapse photographic collages where multiple pictures of the same person are stitched together by a computer program algorithmically. Depending on what's, what's changed and what's moved, the layers are added uh, on top. Um, it's really evident in some of these pictures. Um, so, and each of these prints are on a different uh, material. The, this show, the Digiana show here, we're thinking about digital and analog and this idea of printing a digital image onto an analog surface has, uh, I don't know, a lot of variables that go into the material choices and I think this show we're exploring a lot of those variables. Um, what was the surface, what's the weight, what's the texture of the material. Here we have this leather that is very, uh, you know, well it's fake leather, but it still feels skin-like, like tattoos and ancientness, um, as opposed to this kind of velour on the side, ooh, I like that, details. And opposed to the silk over here, which is very nice and light, and has a, uh, very different weight to it, right? And a different surface and, and holds color actually quite beautifully. Silk is a lovely digital printing material. Who knew? Mm. Look at this, look at this edge here. I like that a lot. Well, why, why are these edges like, like happen? So the, the, way the way these pictures are taken is I take a sequence of pictures um, holding a camera as still as I can, but that's still moving a little bit. And then when I unload my pictures, my first step is to run them through Photoshop and do an auto align layers function, which will align an object in the picture and misalign the edges. And then I save those pictures as JPEGs, those layers as JPEG files, and then run them through my program that recognizes that some of these edges are different and has that sort of line uh, differentiation effect. Well, that's a bad explanation, but it's on the table, it's fine. Um, so you can see um, each each edge here is um, maybe one picture. You can sort of count the number of pictures that go into the hole just by looking at the sort of you know, number of pages that were included in the book there. Yeah, I see. yeah so here we have um, View North on Fifth Avenue and 23rd Street. We have a view of Fifth, I'm sorry, Greenwich Avenue and 11th Street, um, and this is printed on, on a cotton twill, which is a very nice uh, texture and surface quality as well. It's a, not as glossy, it's a nice matte surface, a very, very warm feeling. Um, and then sort of in between there, nice cool, yet heavy, um, what's this, a cotton satin for our uh, print of uh, Eldridge and Canal. Yeah, a lot of details in this one too. Yeah, already like really big yeah. detail printing. Right? Yeah. Yeah. And it's high resolution. I mean, this yeah. printing of fabric now is super high resolution. So you get really close to it and you don't see you know, the dots. Although this one here, you do see texture. This is um, blackout shade, blackout blind. This is roller blind, you know, uh, like a rolling blind for a, um, a window shade. You could print on that, have this when you're going to sleep or something, I don't know. Uh, I thought it was a nice, uh, nice resolution. It also has this grid in the texture, which I thought was a nice digital sensibility. Mm. You because know, we're talking about pixels that are from a grid. So yeah, I think that's, we did the whole around here. And Can we I, have beautiful yeah. work by Sunjin and um, Momo here as well, filling out the space. We have, uh, 
Can I ask some questions? Like, you know, like, what what is your like uh, like turning point from your other star to your, like New York toilet mapping like project to digital like algorithm like photo star like activity? So they both begin from the same point, which is street photography, right? Uh, I'm out taking pictures on the street. Um, and in 2008, before Google Maps, before I had iPhones, um, it was hard to find bathrooms. Uh, in Manhattan, there's very few public restrooms. And um, I don't know, I just started to notice when I found good ones and then started keeping a running list of them and then realized I had something I could share that's worthwhile. And I made a, a map on paper. Actually, this was, as I said before, right before we had iPhones, 2008, right? Mm -hmm. um, worked digitally on that. that. That was something I used a number of different technologies to build. Although in the end, I really just used Adobe Illustrator to lay it out and create a PDF. It was double-sided. Um, color laser print on eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper. Um, and I mean, that was kind of, uh, you know, a project that was its own thing. And it always had its own page on my website, sort of as a separate project. Um, although it was from my photography, it isn't of it, right? Um, and then, um, this is also from my photography, although it is of it. Um, it's one of these things where I'm out on the street all the time and sort of noticing, you know, how things are passing, how things are changing. Um, and that's what I'm conveying, sort of motion, time, um, I don't know if there's a real direct connection there between the toilet map and mm. the algorithm, except for the fact that they both involve spending time outside of the street, and, you know, having... But, having but before, you never, you have you ever tried to make a, that kind of algorithm, like photo thing? I mean, like, you need to make a program, like, for like making something, or your yeah. original thing. So, so maybe... You know, the experience of learning the new technologies, you know, I hadn't really used Illustrator before then, um, gave me the confidence to approach learning another technology, you know, Python programming language or whatever, to create the algorithm that I use to generate these images. Mm. Um, sure, and it was um, soon after that um, that I developed the algorithm, although I, it was using the Raspberry Pi computer, which I think didn't come out until let me correct me if I'm wrong, I think 2010 or 11 or even 12 was Raspberry Pi, you know, being released. Um, and this really grew out of a sort of sense of freedom of like, oh, I can experiment with coding, I can learn how to do anything and not worry about breaking this computer that I'm using because it's really inexpensive. Um, so maybe that was another connection there, is this mm. idea of like an inexpensive map or an inexpensive computer is sort of I don't know if that's what you think I don't know, I mean really it's, it's, it's they're both, they're both, they both stem from street, you know, so being on the street, being outside in this particular place, um, spending time outside, you know, there's humans, we have to eat and excrete in order to live, you know, and here we are living in this place, and we certainly know where to eat, there's plenty of signs of where to get food. <laughs> Um, so, you know, I, I observe that all the time, and, yeah, it, you know, it's, as I said, the map was very much of a time and place, because now there are apps that, you know, you can look up where to go, you know, or whatever, what, what, what are the apps now, like, find a bathroom dot app, yeah. or whatever, you know, like, um, sit or squat, or whatever, right. but yeah, they exist. Um, what, what, do, do you think, what is your next step for your art project? Or, or um, so recently I've been, um, there's two ways that I've been running the algorithm. One is on the Raspberry Pi Live, where people see the collage being generated as it's being, as, you know, over time. Um, and the other way where we have here, where I go around with my very high resolution camera and take a bunch of pictures and then run it through a couple steps, you know, on a computer afterwards to generate the collage. I've been doing the live generation 
in a number of works recently. I'm happy to bring here to Digiana, actually. No, please. Um, yeah. Where we have um, the collage being generated through any number of interfering shapes that um, I think this frame aspect, where we have this very prominent frame um, shape, you know, sort of interfering with our perception of the space, um, replicating physically by putting stuff in the frame of the camera mm. and then having people move through that and have the collage oh. be generated of, of that. So, um, and then I'm also repointing the camera at the collage at being generated on the screen. So there's a, um, uh, goodness, uh, the word yeah, things. yeah, there's a, a looping sort of effect where, All right. um, it, uh, yeah, so it creates an infinity mirror like effect. Oh. In ways. So once again, creating edge over edge over mm. edge over edge. Um, yeah. yeah, so that's what's coming. I'm showing that in um, Syracuse in a few weeks. So I'll be up there um, demonstrating that live and having people interact with it and see how it works. All right. Um, and um, this is personal question like, like Maybe this is not artist question, just uh, like street culture question. Like, so you're doing like a long time street street like shooting like activities. So, like, how do you think like how how now these change before the like old time the New York street scene? You know, you see the before COVID and after oh. COVID and like everything like. It's a lot more bikes. A lot more city bikes. Ah, right? yeah, we of got course. A lot of right. blue. All right. A lot of blue showing up in places. Maybe that's intentional. Maybe I'm, I, I, I like photographing bikes, and it just happens to be more and more city bikes among the bikes. But um, yeah, I, you know, I think there. New York has changed and had changed a lot before the pandemic. I don't know if the pandemic was the shift in what the street looked like but there is a lot of construction right now you know and i think that was happening way before the but these spaces that i'm looking at you know these spaces that are formed by gaps in construction often are now being filled in certainly um how was that just I, I i got to something idea like maybe you have a like dead times photos also so maybe you can put your algorithm like programming really old photo to nowadays photo the same street it's gonna be more long you know and <laughs> maybe you can make a no. you know no. like no photo no. maybe because yeah, so. uh, how, how long how long basically it it takes you put the street on, on like five minutes or like ten minutes or sure minutes? some of these are um maybe even a little bit longer 10 15 10, maybe 15. 20 minutes all um, right mm -hmm. i'll, I'll um, Hang out in a place. Um, but yeah, it's interesting that you talk about um, New York changing. I mean, I'm not the first photographer to observe that. Um, very famous uh, photographer, um, Bernice Abbott, did Changing New York 1939, 1929, mm. right? In those 10 years of like the amazing change that mm. happened here. Then was documented in, in these famous books. Um, and then a lot of photographers have gone back since then and revisit the changing New York photographs of 1929, 1939, and seeing how they are in the 1970s and, you know, today even. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm totally, I've been thinking about that, you know, sort of how to include historic stuff um, within this kind of, uh, contemporary space. Yeah. I do look for old spaces, though, within the city. You know, this contrast of the old and the new, I think, create a very interesting tension visually. Right, we have these old buildings and new buildings, you know, um, oh, right. representing different time periods mm -hmm. in our minds. Do you have any questions about, like, <laughs> Do I have any questions? Do you have any questions? Like, yeah. all um, right. Oh, thank you. I appreciate it. No, um, this is... You're sort of asking me to think deeply about this, because, you know, I think I often am just making it and seeing what feels right you know it's a very much a feeling thing mm. and you know, noticing what oh do i like a detail does that detail catch my eye do i like how these 
forms and these shapes work together to move my eye across space. Right. Um, so it's very much a formal thing. Um, that said, I, 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 I find myself wanting to photograph bicycles in bicyclist form. Maybe I'm becoming a little bit political in like what I want to represent <laughs> in my work here. Right? Advocate for bicycles more. Oh, pedestrians. Gravi yeah. gravitate towards that because of the movement? Yes. Okay. Movement, the shape, right? The circles, I yeah. think, are beautiful. Um, the colors of that. But also, I think it's a political thing. I'm a bicyclist. I think I want to represent the city that I imagine wanting to live in more than like a bunch of traffic. You could imagine this could be filled with a bunch of trucks and cars visually, but it's not. There, there's certain things that I decided to take pictures of. And, you know, I, I like people moving. I'm a. What's a pack rat who likes moving stuff around? <laughs> Somebody who, who, who doesn't like to store stuff, but has a lot of stuff. I have to move it here and there. I don't know what that's called. <laughs> um, so I'm, I'm, a, I'm really interested in how people schlep stuff, right? A schlepper, maybe it's called a schlepper. All right, here we get Larry yeah, Simon, schlepper. Schlepper. Yeah. Um, And this guy has a nice hand truck for, for schlepping stuff. Mm. There. there might even be, yeah. Is that a Magliner? Magliner, I think, is the best uh, hand truck, right? Uh, out there. It looks like yeah. she, she just yeah. carry a lot of yeah. like time it's dimension going, like going across system here, right? right? You right. see him over here. I took a bunch of pictures of him. Yeah. Here's the hand truck again. Like, these, right. like, yeah. like huge people like come here. Yeah. Like, I here. love that the people kind of create the shadow effect. Like it took me the longest time to even recognize that his hoodie, <laughs> this big one, wasn't just a shadow of his buildings. Mm. And cool. you kind of see it over there too, like yeah. on the right hand side, it's so cool. Thank you. Yeah, it's like that pattern recognition, right? It sort of snaps yeah. when you recognize it, it the, the form coalesces, right? It's not a shadow anymore. Oh, it's that guy that was there. Mm -hmm. So what's happening technically is he was there and then he moved somewhere else, and what changed is the light, the angle of light changed a little bit on these little parts here to then have the building lay on top of him in just a couple places. So it flattens it visually, yeah. right? Doesn't it make him seem very large and behind the buildings? Yeah. It's a very interesting optical illusion. I mean, it's happening with this guy here too, with the, with the plane flying out of his eye there, <laughs> right? Where, you know, it has, um, you know, the, the people are just closer to me yeah. when I'm taking the picture, yeah. so that they're just, you know. So you do have, uh, like, you're picking what things come out and what doesn't, or is it more just like that's how it overlays? Yeah, it's more like that's how it overlays. And the overlay that I keep sort of referring to is I have a program, a small program, and I open source it if you decode it. No. Okay. Well, I, I, put I was on Tumblr back in the day. Oh, yeah, that's close. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. um, uh, the, the code that I wrote, what it does is it compares just pixel by pixel two pictures. And if the pixels are different, it layers on the chain. Whatever's different gets added on top. Um, so, you know, this, these small areas. Um, you know, the window edge was detected as different at, after this guy walked by. And so the window edge, the, the edge of the, actually there's a lot of edge, it's mostly edges that get detected as slightly different. Because, right. um, you can really see that happening with the, the letters coming through, right? The, the prominence of all these words is because they have so many edges, actually. And those edges, um, seem to, and part of the algorithm is, I actually don't compare the pictures directly, I blur them first. So I take a picture, I make a blur version of it, I take a second picture, make a blur version of it, and compare the two blurs. And so if there's not a lot of edge, nothing is different, but the edges have a funny thing that happens when you blur them. And um, that's creating this sort of extra edge outline that often occurs too. So yeah, it's a really very much a function of the algorithm and its vagarities. Yeah. The strange algorithmic choices that it makes aren't mine to control, although I did 
code them, right? All right? Yeah. And yeah. I do take the pictures and then feed them and then sort of think about, as I'm taking pictures, the results that have occurred in the past. So, but no, I'm not actually going in and cutting things out by hand ever. Yeah, yeah. So it's, it's like the digital there. version of doing that, like, because that was like an old art form when you like had stationery and you were like building things together. Ooh, yeah. Um, mm -hmm. I see that kind of coming back online with some people, um, but I've never seen it like in a digital kind of mindset. It's so interesting to think of it being just an algorithm mm -hmm. like, that you created. Excellent. <laughs> well, thank you. A lot of what you said was beyond my comprehension, but that part I think is cool. <laughs> yeah, no, excellent. Thank you. I mean, yeah. it's, it's, a, it's actually something that other artists that I think are even beyond me, they're like, oh, you, I'm going to take your code and do a next thing to it, too. So I feel like the algorithm is this sort of language that we're now sort of working within, you know, even if it's just, you know, oh, it's on Tumblr last year or whatever. <laughs> um, we're all sort of familiar with this idea of like, taking a little command and just repeating it over and over and over. Mm -hmm. And that's really what this is. It's like, is it different? Yes or no? Is it different? Yes or no? Mm -hmm. Over and over, over and over, a million times, over and over and over. Yeah. Right? And I would never do that, but the computer does it. So that's what it's good at. And actually, that's really what this came from, was um, I did work for a long time in like Photoshop, you know, working pixel by pixel, manipulating what I wanted to have in the picture. And it was a lot of work. It's a lot of work. Yeah. A lot of time. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of late nights. Um, and I, as I was spending these late nights at the computer, I was thinking, boy, isn't the computer supposed to be doing the work, hard work for us, not making more work for us? Yeah. And so I really was thinking, like, how can I get it to do what I'm doing already? And I realized, it's like, oh, I'm just adding what's changed, what's different. So layers of difference. So, and, and yeah, I mean, it doesn't seem like this is many moments, but this really is 15 minutes or so of time passing. Um, although it does give us that energy, that sense of the New York moment, but it's not really a moment, right? But it does have that energy of you know, people passing. Is it, um, I'm going to misquote somebody, I, you know, it's, it's from the Fuji's, it's like, uh, two MCs can't occupy the same space at the same time, it's against the law of physics, right? This is, but here we have the breaking of that law of physics, right? They have sort of multiple people occupying the same space at the same time, mm -hmm. and, and how, does that, how is that possible? Mm -hmm. I think that's interesting. Could you, could you take, talk, talk about like these, these two, like, sure. Theater so, um, so why you started like taking and what is the like these theaters and like the stories going on? So and, the story is these these are theater productions at the Hudson Guild Theater Company, right? With the E. Um, at the end, I spelled that. Um, Hudson Guild Theater Company, I'm their uh, company photographer. I've been photographing their productions for over 10 years now. And also, the Hudson Guild has shown my work in their gallery. So the, the, product, the theater director is familiar with my collages. And I suggested at a certain point recently that I, photo, that I use my photographs of his productions as source material for the collages. And he agreed. And so their most recent production is this, it's actually two plays, Sun, Blurring, Shine. And they're both these modern, sort of very abstract plays. And it turned out to work really, and, and sort of minimally staged. So the background, there's nothing, the set was minimal, right? It's just a, uh, a couple things on stage and the actors. And that actually worked really well with the algorithm because there's, you know, what's moved is retained really well. And so this guy with this, um, the sun, is, is in really a bunch of positions, right? And, and uh, expressing that sort of sense of motion. You know, this guy might have stayed in that one position and wiggled his moon around and changed the moon from a crescent moon to a full moon or something. And I think this guy was just waving his severed head around for a while. Um, well, this person in the middle was reciting poetry. And it was a really fantastic, um, surreal kind of uh, performance. Um, and actually, this print on this is velour, crushed velour, um, has a sort of mystical, magical sensibility mm -hmm. too that I think uh, you know, 
if you choose these materials for randomly or in the purpose for for example this yeah. let, let's choose this crystal like star material thing yeah. like these kind of like me story things yeah no and I, I chose these two materials for these images and you can see they're kind of different these are yeah everything these different. are yeah. they're all on different materials but these are natural materials these are cotton and silk touch the silk it's lovely Right, wow. yeah. <laughs> and it flows so nicely. The yeah, even the, like in the yeah. day daylight, you know, like it's yeah. totally changed their like house yeah. looks like. So yeah, it's, like, like, it's interesting to nicely. put the yeah. window size. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. But yeah, I chose, and these are these are artificial materials. This is not natural leather. This is a leatherette, right? Um, and artificial velour, um, and the artifice of the theater, right? It matches, I think, that sort of. The sensibilities of, of the two different plays, um, this sort of mystical, magical sensibility of the velour, match the mystical, magical sensibility of that play. And this was this play about um, these brothers who um, were working on getting rich, basically. You know, and I feel like the leather sort of uh, has a luxurious quality to it, you know, mm. it's sort of substantive, and then also it's right here in the picture, this leather, yeah. you know, it's right there, and it's a pretty big visual, so it, I like the way this texture was, was meshing, mm. so I was thinking leather, leather with this one, um, this a sort of striving sense, the shoes too. And those are only two, two, two individuals in that, right? Yeah, and this yeah. is just two people, so this guy is also standing right here, or sitting right here, and doing gesticulating and this guy is sitting over here and then walking over there. Mm -hmm. um, this is yeah. uh, more Korean, movement or more Korea than this I mean, so feel different. They feel very yeah, different, yeah. yeah. So yeah. why, the, how did you choose the size of each work? Yeah, so the things. sizes are as wide as I can print. It's the it's the material width. Mm -hmm. So this is whatever this is a sixty inch width of leatherette. Mm -hmm. um, and I think this is fifty three inches wide of this cotton. And, and I went the long way with this, but it's sort of material constraints mm -hmm. is what I'm going with at this point. Mm -hmm. I'm generating really large files. I could print these. Yeah. You know, right. wall size. Yeah. If you print a bit more bigger size, this person like a few more bigger. It's a very different impression. Absolutely. When he becomes bigger than life. Yeah. Yeah. Because right now he's about life size, right? And yeah, I think almost, so. Well, maybe a little smaller, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Absolutely. Maybe someday you should print out really huge printout and put some like outside the building. Let's <laughs> like do it. Let's, like let's, a mural. Huge, huge mural. Let's, like. let's get a printer. And I printed pretty big. Have you printed on non like fabrics? Like, yeah. Have you printed on billboard um, material? <laughs> well, so I made here's a yeah. There, there was. I have some like, very large. This is a really small print on on metal. I've been doing a lot of oh. metal, like big metal prints, sixty by forty, twenty four by thirty six, twenty by thirty. You know, sort of poster sized or beyond on that material. Um, so you yes. mean for each one, does it require like a, a different camera? Like, are you very deliberate with what camera you use to shoot it? I use the highest resolution camera I can get my hands on. Basically, okay. um, for a long time, I was using a Sigma DP2 Quattro, which is like a very specific high resolution sensor, which I really like. And then I'm now shooting with the Canon 5DS, which is a 50 megapixel sensor. Um, a yeah, very, very high resolution full frame sensor. Um, what yeah, happens if you do it on a low res? So I used to do that, yeah. and we have examples. Um, and I began with that when I was um, uh, uh, photographing. Uh, so this, the first time I started this in 2013, when I wrote the album, 10 years ago. This is 10 years. <laughs> oh, wow. And, and this is the result of. Uh, uh, this is a lenticular print, so from different angles you'll see different images, yeah. different, um, you know, sort of layers being added on, if you will. Um, and that's low resolution, that's 
uh, I think that's not 640 by 480, but whatever it's next from that. 720 by something. 720 by oh, 600. Right, but you can see that's much lower resolution. You yeah. see the edges are much more prominent mm -hmm. in a way, right? They're sort of jagged. So that's what happens. The edges were very mm -hmm. jagged, which I kind of like. I yeah. still use low resolution cameras in a lot of my work. So the answer to your question is, yeah, I'm pretty deliberate about my camera choices, but not, it's not like every picture has a different camera. Right. I, I use my very high resolution camera when I'm shooting stuff outside. Um, and when I'm doing an interactive work, I'll be using a lower resolution camera because it processes much more quickly. Okay. Um, I have webcams, and the Raspberry Pi has some very um, high resolution cameras that are, it can run directly very quickly. So the Raspberry Pi is this um, microcontroller, this computer, our Raspberry Pi, mm -hmm. like the number, is the name of a computer. Okay. And it's about this big. And it runs on a cell phone battery, and you could run programs on it. And the program I wrote did this, and I connected a camera to it, and it did this. This was, this was really run from a Raspberry Pi. Um, and uh, you know, it's uh, oh, you know, it's something that allowed me to do a lot of outdoor stuff. You know, because it's battery powered. It's like a um, not be plugged in and tethered somewhere, or I could you know, have a computer wherever I went. It's like, yeah, you can do that with a laptop, but do I really want to take my $2,000 MacBook Pro out on the street with me or, you know, in <laughs> Chelsea or wherever, you know, for hours? But the Raspberry Pi is $35, you know, like replaceable, really. And do you have a Raspberry Pi? Am I preaching to the converted already? <laughs> You have a Raspberry Pi? No. <laughs> Maybe someday. Yeah, I don't know. Well. No, Minecraft. <laughs> no, Minecraft. Um, All right, so, so I'm going to yeah. quit the. Great, the, well, thank you. Yeah. Thank you, everyone, for a <laughs> like, really, really great conversation. Yeah, 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 So, yeah, I hope we can do like, the, this kind of event again. Okay. Yeah. All right, thank you. This is Tommy. The first <laughs> show in the DJI. All right. Yeah.